But what what was a surprising fight though that was on point though was the rematch between Derek Chisora and Joseph Parker. Speaking of actually Parker being mentioned, like you Facts. know, yeah, that you know, you know, they they it was infinitely a lot better than the first fight, man. It was better than a lot of fucking fights, but yeah. but the, the sad part is I hate when the sport robs the guy the first time, and it's usually the older fighter he gets robbed the first time. Mm-hmm. And his career is never the same. And then the guy comes back in the rematch, and he has the best fight of his fucking life, and he wins clear. And people just act like the first fight didn't happen. Um, yeah, like yeah. James Tony, Samuel Peter. Like, yeah, yeah. We we mentioned that fight a lot. Like, I mean, yeah. If you if, if you're if you're a Tony fan, or in, in this case, I like I was kind of both. Cause like I said, if, if for people who have not heard me say, it, you know, Peter. You know, it's part of my mom's tribe. You know, and he's you know for my so I, I so I have to support him no matter what because I already know what to, you know what it takes for him to actually get to that level. <laughs> you know, so yeah, you know the first fight, yeah, Tony should have probably been San Peter, and I admit that. But San Peter, yeah, that was came a one sixteen, one twelve ass fight. Yeah, but then San Peter came back, improved in the second fight, and boxed James Tony's head off. Like that was probably his clean and dropped him. Yeah, drop. Yeah, it was his cleanest loss since Roy. You know, like, yeah, it was so, you know, and he was dancing on James Tony. It, it was, it was that, it was that bad. And yeah, he, like he was stunning on this nigga. So, and I'm like, oh, fuck it. At, at Beko Marez, the first fight, another. Yeah, one. yeah exactly. So, but this one is just like, yeah, it, this fight. Look, you saw the best and the worst of Parker. You see the best of Parker as Parker does have. Good punch left. He does have pretty fast hands for a guy of his size, and he couldn't miss with that either uppercut, either short left or short uppercut. Because good lord, yeah. how Chizora, It was uppercut city on all three of those official knockdowns. Like how Chizora managed to not only you know, to go down and get up after that and survive after those knockdowns is beyond me. But it also shows the worst of Parker because Parker could not finish him. Like every single time, like Parker is a poor finisher. He has he has yeah. the power. He has, you know, he has he the has power, the punch selection, the speed, like the size. But he he's a guy who can't put it together in the in the moment you need it the most. Exactly, and now he can get you to that moment multiple times, though. Yeah, absolutely. Because there was a bunch of times where I felt like if he would have just you know put his foot on the gas. He could have had Chisora out, but it's like he fucking finds a way to fuck it up. He lets Chisora land something, or he misses, or yeah, like you say, like like I never really looked at it like that. But now that you mention it, like his finishing is horrible. Absolutely, it's like there's no reason for a guy who I mean he has oh he has a sixty five percent KO ratio. Like there's no reason. For someone like that to not be able to finish someone, we've seen him finish people before. I just don't know why, like, to, like you know, he had to sort of like dead to like dead to the world. Like, you Dude, know, Chris Bird goes in for the kill better on them, them old ass USA Tuesday night fights. I'm saying, like, like it, yo, Chris Bird used to like stop niggas, like. <laughs> Exactly, and bigger, you know, bigger dudes. And it's like here, here's here's Parker as a big dude with power, like not be able to finish guys. And it's like, ah, yeah, it, it, it was frustrating. And Chisora, though, like he go to the same corner, and then afterwards he'd explode, and you know, and 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 rock Parker back, like you know, and, and do a couple of rounds where Chisora was actually teeing off on Parker. You know, so yeah, was, yeah, facts. Yeah, okay. Yo, the commentating was dope too. Like, cause I felt like they was like they didn't talk too much, and they low key felt like they was fans of the fight. So it kind of felt like you was watching the fight with just some British dudes. Right? Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. like nigga was like, "What's your Sora?" Oh, what's your Sora? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Tazora, yeah. I mean, to, it, pretty much any time that Tazora launched some sort of offensive, like that, that the crowd just went crazy. Yeah, like the crowd was going like crazy. Like that shit was crazy. Like that was a good ass. That was a good fun ass fight. Like, yeah, yeah. Like it, it was a knockdown or two away from being a fight of the year candidate. Though. Right, yeah, I was wait, I, was, I wanted to see Parker at least go down, at least to. Yeah, I was that. begging for Parker to go down, like, like honestly, I, I didn't want to sort of lose, man. Like, I, I, I hate that he got robbed of a career best win right. in the first fight. Because honestly, Tresora gets that win. People always say, "Oh, Tresora don't really have no wins." Like, th- that's why. Like. <laughs> Exactly, and the funny thing is too is like the you scores, um, have a better win than half the heavyweight division too, right? <laughs> you know, and, and I know Tazara. I mean, the funny thing too, the scoring though was close though. I mean, someone. I mean, I mean one. I mean, imagine scoring three knockdowns and you only reaching one fourteen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Peter like, Quillen ass nigga. Yeah, one it was a one fourteen one twelve, a one fifteen one eleven, and a one fifteen one ten. Damn, and that's with three knockdowns. Like my yeah. goodness, like <laughs> you say, like don't be, But the thing is, I felt like Tresor would come back and he would. The judges they got uh, swayed over by the crowd sometimes, but then Tresor knew how to steal his momentum. Right. So yeah, I get, yeah, it did feel like a close fight though. Like, but it just felt like Parker always piled up more points. But as far as like ring general shit. It's too many times he let dude off the hook and got rocked in the process. Like, absolutely. You know, what but, the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. So, but like I said, I mean, it didn't take away from the. It was a quality heavyweight fight, and you know, yeah. being, you know, like I said, I mean, there's not too many entertaining parts. Too, too, too bad it wasn't on a quality card. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, with the, with the exception of that one upset, you know, because um, one of uh, one of Eddie's fighters did get upset on the co-main. You know, by an unknown uh, French African fighter, you know, and the crowd let him have it because he was doing push ups afterwards after bodying dude with a sickening body shot. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, that car was, was a little a bit. French cute. African? Yeah, you know, he, he was a puncher, dude. Yeah. Well, we tell y'all about the Africans, nigga. You can't sleep on them. You cannot sleep on them. Sleep on them. Yeah, you know, they have, like I said, every now and then they come up, you know, they the tough as fuck and they they usually got power if they don't have power they still tough as fuck like, exactly and they got like a stamina out this world so like if they're not throwing a gazillion punches at you they're gonna take a gazillion punches to come at you so exactly so i mean yeah that was that, that was that was the highlight of the, of, of the undercard though but at least like i said the fight the main event delivered you know and yeah parker has now has some momentum to build upon you know because Hopefully he doesn't regress back and like, hey, you know, I, you know, I, I won this. He spent a whole year going life and death with Tresor, though. Like, I'm tired of all these top heavyweights having these whole fucking. I I need two fights to beat Tresor ass niggas. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, Dylan White, I'm looking at you with this shit too. Like, you another one of these damn. I needed two fights. Yeah, and Dylan White was supposed to have a fight that he, you know. That you know, he did, obviously he kind of canceled because he was like, wait a minute, I'm about to be, I'm about to be facing Fury next. Why do I, why do, why do I need a risk again? You know, because that shit would have been, yeah. Because if he lost, shit would have been history. You know, so yeah, this, this is, imagine like if Derek Jasora has the wins over Dylan White and Joseph Parker on his record, like that'd be crazy, right? Like, yeah, exactly. People could have. That's the sad part. Yeah, so it's like when he's fighting and trying to be a main eventer and all that, I don't really have nothing to say because it's like he be getting fucked over. Yeah, but one thing that, you know, before we actually go on to the next topic, one thing I will say about Chazar is they, uh, Chazar has taken a lot of punishment over the years because so he's faced a lot yeah. of big punchers over the years. Like, you know, like, I mean, I, I, I said, don't I can't just get him out of there. It's like, right. You know, I, they, they I, go, I, 10, 12 rounds with his ass. Yeah, like one thing I don't want to see is, is being turned into a, a punching bag. Like, I mean, he's taking, like, I mean, the wars, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, the Parker fights, you know, you know, the white fights were wars. The, the taco fight. Yeah, you know, exactly. Us, I mean, Us, I mean, well, luckily, Usyk put hands on, but, you know, 
he probably has the he probably had the best strategy of actually being Usyk at heavyweight. You know, it doesn't get brought up as much as it, as it should be. You know, if you're a big heavyweight, yeah. use your Joshua. Fucking gun. Joshua had the best, like, because Joshua punches like like. They, his individual good shots, I felt, did way more to Usyk than Tresora's wild, clumsy, right, slugging but, shots. But the one, but the one thing that Tresora did that that Joshua didn't do was he was able to empty Usyk's gas tank to the point where he couldn't do that. He couldn't get a second win going, you know, and that's what made yeah, that. He was just bodying him and just rah, 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 like, yeah, exactly. Because Usyk, Usyk was pretty much Joshua pretty don't fight like that. Joshua don't. Just throw himself at you like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Joshua, Joshua tried to box with dude, and you know, and unfortunately, you know, I mean, he's a, although he's a competent boxer, he's not Usyk level type of boxer. He could have still boxed with him if he would have just boxed aggressively, like instead of yeah, yeah. being one two, be one two three four. Yeah, exactly, and that, and that's what, and then combine that with the feints and the movement, and you got a tired. And, you know, you, yeah. you got a tired heavyweight, and then you got Usyk, who was able to go into second gear and do what he did to secure those belts. Because yeah, people, anytime you say like be more aggressive or you know step it up, people assume that you got to drop both your hands and start fighting like Carl Frotz or some shit, or <laughs> are looking like Saunders, or, like or, or, or somebody looking for a big ass one two or, or a big shot to turn the fuck fight around. Right. When all you mean is just like, I, you know, just put your foot on the gas. Like, you know how Tito steps it up? Like, mm-hmm. and he just kind of, or even like Crawford, like, all you motherfuckers is Crawford fans. Like, how y'all not realize that shit? Like, I'm saying. And Crawford, I think, uh, Porter put his foot in your ass. Like, a word? Like, really? <laughs> I ain't, hold on. Pop, 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 pop. No sun, let me steal your shine. <laughs> oh man, no. but yeah, Chazar though, no, like I said, I mean, I hope Eddie doesn't like you know make him like a, a career opponent, you know, and just like yeah, because he has eleven losses, he's taking a lot of punch. You know, Imagine fucking Sean Porter is retired, like retired, and the Derek Chisora, you know, and it, you know, it, Sean Porter is worried about becoming an opponent. Right, and you know, Chisora got Derek Chisora main eventing as an opponent for niggas and going life and death with him too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, most people don't. I mean, most people don't realize how far it goes back. I mean, he's faced Vitaly, he's faced Fury twice, he's faced Telenius. He's not. I mean, he has Malik Scott Zero. Like, dude has, dude has faced a lot of heavyweights, like notable heavyweights in his career. Like, he's so you know, he never faced Wilder though, man. Yeah. And I know, and what's funny thing is too, people were actually trying to mention who that what that, that would be a good fight for Wilder to come back to. Like, uh, I, at least I know for sure that Wilder won't ever take a fight like that because that's not his thing. <laughs> he he's not gonna fuck around for a fight like that. And uh, and and even if he did, Wilder could well, probably ice Chisora with one shot. There's no question about that one because yeah, Chisora's punch resistance is not what it used to be. <laughs> But um, it'll be in a, but like I said, you know where Chisora goes. I mean, Chisora already said he's not retiring. You know, he put a tweet says he'll be back in the summertime. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> we will definitely see. Um, but also, what was good last night that we didn't really do a pre- we didn't do a preview on was the Zerto Gonzalez card from Golden Boy on the zone. Uh, from top to bottom, that was an entertaining ass card. I gotta say, like there was facts. Yeah, like super bad. Was, yeah, super bad was the was the star of the undercard, man. Like it was a good and you know, Lamar Rhodes had a good showing. Yeah, I guess Renee Alvaro. Yeah, that, that was a really good fight. Actually, and, that was uh, that was a really good fight. And, and Sparza had a had a, a quality showing too. Yeah, against Ortiz. Like there, there wasn't a bad fight. Like I was entertained with every fight. Yeah, and we're and crazy. And like you, you're talking about entertaining. You had two women's boxing matches and like what two men's. Yeah. And look at that. It was quality. Like you wouldn't even think that. Wow, that was just a good card. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was like it was very entertaining. Like, you know, super bad scored. I'm probably a KO of the year candidate again. You know, another one. 
and then, just to hold the punches and like and honestly like the, the chick she was fighting it kind of felt weird like it felt like her top half was tinier or yeah like she had small arms or something like yeah. it felt like if somebody was like 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 let's melt like yeah, she, she, part of your body yeah, she, yeah, she was sick. she was really small and super bad. Super bad is already a small person too. So, but her just, small was weird because her legs didn't look small. <laughs> Think about it. No, look at her. Like she didn't look small. Like her like her bottom half didn't look small, <clears throat> but her top half looked like way like smaller. Like it should just look weird, man. Yeah, you know. And then, good lord, like I mean. They, I mean, those the, the left hands that she absorbed, the southpaw left hooks, man. Yikes! <laughs> you know, like she had, like. And it's funny thing, she was landing on super bad too, because when they was trading, super bad kept getting hit with one of them shits too. Like, but mm-hmm. it's like she was getting hit like two to one, three to one at times. So, right. And you can't be getting hit like that from super bad. Like I don't care what she landed back. Yeah, like I said the, the the final shot that put her on the canvas. The referee just like, yeah, no, nah, like you can't yeah. be taking no, you know, kill shots yeah. like that. I think I'm gonna let you continue. Like now, nah, you you you're, you're done for the evening. <laughs> you know, but yeah, super bad was super bad that night. Like my goodness, like yeah. she was definitely the star, but uh, Lamar Le- 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 Rose's performance was solid as well. Um, Absolutely, yeah, Le- Ro- yeah, Lamar. I like how he boxed and. You know the shifting and the defense and yeah, and and the mean check hooks he was letting on when Alvarado at times like and like, never letting Alvarado fully stake his claim in the fight like he fought like the way Soro should have fought right like he was like kind of, press yeah. when he's supposed to you know defend when you need to but then you know be more consistent offensively you know right yeah yeah and and and, and there were times cause it was a good mixture it, there was times where you know where Roth was just you know he was he was countering within the flurries that uh, Alvarado was throwing at him, and then there were times where he was just like you know what let me just you know let me just plant my feet, grip my teeth, bite down on my gum shield, and train with dude and rocking him. Like, yeah. it, oh, let me push him backwards now, like yeah. Like it's like it's like I don't know like ring general should like dudes gotta watch like they gotta notice the flows of the fight. Like. Mm-hmm. Like, and honestly, yeah, that's why I felt like was the difference between uh, Danny Garcia and uh, Errol Spence. Because there was times where Danny, if he would have pressed a little more, he could have really did damage to Spence and pushed him backwards. But he would, he wouldn't. Right. So it, you know, and he still threw seven hundred punches, but it's the type of punches you throw. Right. And, and that's what it comes that's what it means to like really pressing people or, or, or throwing the same throwing the right punch you know ring general to ring IQ right and Roach had that in space and I think Roach I think I think Roach really learned from his lone loss to Jam- uh, Jamel Herring you know how did, so like you know if, I know dude was calling out uh, Gutierrez who's gonna be facing Colbert and uh Chris Colbert in um, February you know, so it's like, yeah, we do might do might be ready for a title shot next uh, at some at some at some some one thirty champion. But yeah, I, yeah, I was thoroughly impressed. Alvarado, I don't think I know they're talking that retirement talk for him. He was talking, but I don't think he's ready to. I don't think he's retirement ready. Like he, I mean, still he can still do something. Just me, he just may need to lower his competition for a little bit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, why I don't. That, they're like, like, dude, this is a regular Golden Boy card. This is a Zerto card, career mode card. Like, y'all act like this man was like co-main on pay-per-views. Like, right? Yeah, like this is like uh, Eric Morales with a like, Danny Garcia co-main or some shit. Like, right. <laughs> like, dude, you're like, like uh, you're not even the co-main for this. Like. Yeah, you know, yeah, they're white, so I mean, for a, uh, a super bad standalone main event. Right, so I mean, hopefully Alvarado, you know, 
they, whatever they, whatever the situation is, when they're talking that, like you know, to get their minds right. Because Alvarado, both, you know, it, you know, dude, dude's been entertaining fights for Golden Boy for a good for a good minute. So and he and he's not fading to the point. I mean, he's only been knocked out once. So it's, it's like it's yeah. the pandemic now, and everybody keeps talking about man, I ain't gonna be an opponent no more. Like yeah, I ain't gonna go ahead then, shit, like. Exactly. Porter got a podcast. I don't know about all you other niggas. Like, <laughs> Facts. Yo, you and Tesoro gonna jump on one and start to start one? Like, y'all gonna have a UK, Mexico, you know, podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that might could work. Like, somebody out there might like, take, take the idea, like, damn, man, ring game with another one. Exactly, man. So yeah, with, uh, so the main event itself, I know Pete got some thoughts for us. So I'll let him speak on it first. With you know, with, uh, yeah, they should Mocha, be cool because we can't beat bars. And then Yuneski Gonzalez, man. So P, man, tell us what you thought about that fight, son. I mean, it was a, it was a good fight. It was a you know good back and forth. Both of them had their you know had had their high points. But I'm just I'm sorry. But I'm just not impressed with Zerto. Like, they're really trying to push him hard. And he just I he just doesn't have it in my mind. Like he did good against Gonzalez, but let's be honest. I'm I i do not care what nobody says. If if this was the Uniesi Gonzalez that fought Shabransky a couple of years ago, I don't think this I don't think this version of Zerto would have beat him. And I'll be completely fucking honest about that. I don't give a shit what nobody thinks. I, that that union or even the even the one that fought that um fought uh Gavastic would have would have beaten him. Like he's he's not he's not ready for these top guys. I don't think he beats Bivol. I think Bivol beats him and it'll be pretty easy. He wants that smoke. I, he, I wasn't I wasn't high on him at 168 and I'm not I'm still not high on him at 175. Yeah, I just don't get on. Yes, I don't understand why people are pushing him so heavy. Like he, Oh my god. He's low key. If we cared about him more, he would be like, bro. He's like the Mexican Crawford. Like, he's never had that one big fight. Yeah. But the only difference is. The only difference is. I mean, the only difference is, though, he, he, he's, he's probably been more. He's been more vulnerable than Crawford has, though. Of course, he's of course. Very vulnerable. He's never really fought somebody that you really thought he would lose against. And he's fought quality people like Arthur Abraham. I didn't think Abraham would beat him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jesse I, and, fucking Hart wasn't gonna beat him. And, and Jesse Hart came very close. Especially, I was gonna say, I, I, I wrote him off after the Jesse Hart fight. Yeah, I, that he was put life and death with Jesse Hart. Like, I was done with him, and now they're trying ooh. to prop him back up again. So I'm like, well, is this the same? <laughs> this is the same Zerto. I'm like, okay, let me exactly. see. He, he's still, he's fucking down. He's like Chavez Jr. that paid attention in school. Right. <laughs> I just like, I was getting annoyed because the zone was really trying their hardest to fucking just throw this guy in our faces. And it, it was annoying me to no end. I'm like, Nico uh, Ali and uh, Campbell Head. Yes. But, <laughs> and that's its own separate thing, but this is like. Oh my god! It it, it, it got ridiculous. The, the the dick sucking for an uh, average guy at best was mind blowing to me. I'm sorry. Know. He's not completely average, like. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, he's he slightly average. slightly above average. He's not a world beater to me. You I don't see. Hold on. So you you don't think Zerdo is world class? I mean, he's a good fighter, but. Hold on, no, world class and good fighter is two different things. Like, I don't think he's top tier. No, not at all. But, but, but world class is world class, though. Like, you could be top 20 in world class. I'm sorry. I think he's at best, at absolute best, B minus. And I wouldn't even rate him a B minus. Of course he's world class. He'd be, he'd be I give him like a, a C, C plus. A C plus, B minus. I can see that. Yeah, but I think I think with I think with him, it's just more or less. It's like his his recent you know string of beating up on former like you know 
light heavyweight contenders that haven't really done anything in a while, like a like the Barrera and the Gonzalez. I'm gonna say, yeah, but he's beating up on on guys that are like oh, are they're done anyway. They were done already. Yeah, they were done. He does have power, but I feel like out of one through ten, his power is like a seven, and he kind of gets by off of just the activity and the placement and just being physically stronger. You know, like so I'm, that's I'm sorry. I just, it just, it's just, it was just, I'm, I'm, I'm beating up the the corpses of Unieski Gonzalez and Sullivan Barrera. Okay, cool. Uh, that's not gonna make me all giddy over. You. Like, you no. The Burchell of light heavyweight. <laughs> Burchell of light heavyweight. <laughs> I knew he was gonna say well, something. I mean- I mean, he, I mean, he, I mean, he, I mean, he, I mean he, he, so far he's cleaned up at least three of the four light heavyweights of contenders. Like Carpensi is one that he cleaned. Oh up. yeah, that the other one, Carp Carpensi. Right. Yeah. Come on. Now. Yeah. Like, like, like I, I mean, like he's he accomplished all of this in one year and still fighting the top opponent. <sighs> what are you talking about? Zerto, like. Mm. And like Z- Zerto is like I hate when guys just be in all these multiple divisions but never seem to really fight anybody. Right, but I, I, th- I think I think everyone wants to know like what's the end goal? Like I mean I know Zerto's been wanting the ball fight and then honestly Gonzalez fight like I mean he came I, I mean he definitely he definitely came out early like he lost a couple of the early rounds to Gonzalez. Gonzalez was kind of hitting. I think call out Benavides. Yeah. But is, is, is it, and he can call out better be better be Zerto's against him. Although all those guys, Joe Smith would knock him the fuck out. All these guys would, would like those those champions would all beat. Him. It's a good fight. Fucking Callum Johnson's a good fight, but I think he's fighting Joe Smith. Yeah, I think it's just more or less like what's the angle? Like I mean, the Gazelle's fight, like pretty much after like the third or fourth round, where he keeps Gazelle's calling, he keeps calling out Paval, so that's what he wants right now. I, I give him credit for at least calling out. Dude. Really going after that fight, and you know, Bavol, but see, on it too long. and I mean, I, it's funny, and because people are, people are giving him like a real shot at beating Bavol, and I'm just like, he's not beating Bavol. I think no, right, he has a, he has a shot. Well, no, I said, Bavol I, I, is disciplined, but I mean, he's nothing special. Like I that. understand why people are saying that because Bavol is kind of spoiling on the vine and fighting uninspired, but I think he like against. Against uh, uh, against Zerto, I think you'd see, you know, Bivol come out like he he would he would box the shit out of him. But that's the thing. Sometimes you can't just turn it on and off like that. Sometimes spoiling on the vine to unspoil is a process of more than one fight. Yeah, understood. Understood. He might try his hardest to unspoil himself. When damn Zerto is throwing combinations on his ass and he on the ropes because he couldn't zap him off of him. Right. <laughs> I, I, I understand that, but I just, maybe it's just me. I just feel like when you're th- at that level, like, and you're the type of person that, like, fights down or fights depending on your competition. I know people say, well, you can't unswitch it, but it's like, you know what you're getting into before the fight happens, when the fight is made. You're going to get up for that fight if it's worth it. He should, but you know, you know how it is, man. You know, he's getting there and the fight is one thing, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I, well, honestly, I feel like it's a 50 50 fight. It, it, it probably is right now. And like I said, Zerto, I said, Zerto is still, I mean, in front of Zerto is still. I would pick before the win, but I feel like it's a 50 50 fight. Because I, mean, I do see Zerto, you know. <clears throat> If Zerto could keep attacking Bivol, he's gonna be in that fight. Right. And, but, but, but yeah, but I want to see. This is 2022 should be the year that Zerto steps up. Like, no more Unesca Gonzalez. I mean, like I said, it was a good slugfest and everything like that. And Gonzalez probably took way more punches than he should have. Like, if the fight should have been stopped. It shouldn't have been a slugfest, though. That's the thing. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's also true. <laughs> this, you, you're going to slugfest with a 36 year old Gonzalez. Who's yeah, probably he's more he's like forty three? You're going with a thirty six year old who's probably forty three in Cuban years. Like, come on, now. you should have got him out of there quicker. That's nah, true. Man. It was trying to give us a fight of the year. Man. <laughs> it, 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 and honestly, I'm not mad at that, but it's, it's just more like you know, yeah. 
you know, okay, so you got you got the Barrera and you got Gonzalez out of your system. Like now you you gotta face at least a top five fighter. I mean, Golden Boy, that, that, Golden Boy needs to, like if if you can't get up a ball fight, you gotta get him there with a top five fighter, and not like a Kovalev, which is which is a possible fight since the zone owes him one, you know, something like that, you know, or maybe a Danny Jacobs or something, something that we can actually see where this dude is at, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Zerto has has talent. There's no question about that. But it's just like his inactivity and his kind of in the way he's kind of maneuvered his career has been very negative. I mean, I mean, dude, he's le- inspired though. Like, he's even more, he seems more motivated. He fights that way too. Yeah, because I mean, top rank. I mean, for the most part, I mean, obviously he left top rank because he was going to be forced to defend his belt against someone he didn't want to defend his belt against, or some shit like that. Well, Bim Bim Hole just comes off like it's another day at the office, yada yada yada. <laughs> yeah, but like, but but yeah, you know, if you if you look, if you're a talent like that, but we, we that's the fight we want to see, like you know, uh, and. Yeah, and that should happen because Bavol is. Yeah, I mean Bavol. I mean you got you got to make the fights at 175. You know, to see where the, everyone's at. Like you can't just be having them face all types of fighters, faded fighters, contend, faded contenders, contenders that are you know all types of. You got you got to make you got you got to make those fights. And you know, hopefully that Bavol and Zerto is a thing in 2022. Uh, Lord knows Bavol needs it because his last couple fights have been so uninspired, like they're just like boring. Like, <laughs> you know, it, it needs that they need to happen, though. But I'm sorry, I just think Bavol beats him and it won't even be that hard. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I look if I had if I if I had a gun to my head, I'd be like, yeah, I'd pick Bavol to win this fight if I had to choose between the two. But uh, but but Zerto is a very is a live dog. He's a very live dog. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, but but at least like I said, it was a good. But you know, for what he did with Gonzalez, it was a good, entertaining scrap, and there was a stoppage. Thankfully, like if it went the distance, I'd probably look at him kind of side eyed about that. Oh but, hell yeah, we, we wouldn't hit any of it. Yeah, you know, but but at least the thing is though, he was actually hurting Gonzalez, but Gonzalez was just you know. Yeah, Gonzalez was also hurting him too. Like. Yeah, but I mean, in certain and Gonzalez was and one thing I didn't like. I didn't like to see was um, Gonzalez in this corner just weeping. You know, he was weeping, crying. There's no crying in boxing. Stop. Yeah, like I mean, dude, like when the referee stepped in, he he actually gave the referee a big hug and took him off his feet. I was like, whose man's is this? <laughs> like, Why, whose like, man's is this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like yo, he was he was crying, crying on Zerto's shoulder, crying in his interview. You know, it was like crying in his trainer's arms, like yo, like he because he and all because he was appreciative of the opportunity, not because he lost. <laughs> you know, but yeah, that that, that was kind of wild to watch though. But yeah, but like let me say, overall it was a good fight and it was a definitely it was a really good card. Um, I don't know, fuck it. We, we go. I want a comparison fights with you What's happening, bro? What's the closer fight? <clears throat> Bivol and Zerto? Or Stevenson and Colbert? Stevenson and, Stevenson Col- and Colbert. Stevenson and yeah, Colbert. Okay. Stevenson and Colbert to me. Yeah, because, I mean, I mean, both, because... I think because uh, because Stevenson and Cobra are not necessarily spoiling on the vine. I think so that factor is immediately removed from their situation. They're both right now are operating at pretty high levels right now. Um, Are you saying that fight would be more competitive though? Yes. Mm -hmm. So y'all saying like Bivol would be Zerto like 116, 112, 117, 111? Very possible, yes. Damn, I see that like a 115, 113 type of fight, though. And, 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 that, like and that's, and, and that's mostly because it mostly it, a fight that's like one sided. Yeah, because the thing is, though, I mean, even though Bavol's fights, un, like, Bavol fights very uninspired these days, he still had, I mean, he's clearly winning these fights. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Yeah. If, if they were closer, I'd be like, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. But like the, like the fact that he's fighting, like he's in, he, he fights in his first game, but he's he's clearly winning these fights, like clearly in wide, 
in most cases. So I, I can't like, you know, you know. So in in so it's hard to think that it might be a little bit different. Was there like I think it'll be a little bit more competitive, but I still think it'd be like an eight four. 8 4 type of even 9 3 could possibly, you know, on, Z on Zerto. Whereas I think, you know, Stevenson, I think Stevenson and Colbert will probably be a little different because um, Stevenson obviously, you know, he has a low, I mean, he he can, he, you know, he has a low output and everything like that. And Colbert. Colbert has a high output. And yeah, very exactly. accurate. <laughs> but I feel like that fight is going to be where somebody's going to pull away. It might start off a little scrappy, like the first four rounds. Like it'll be like Floyd versus Sosa. <laughs> it'll look scrappy and competitive for like the first five rounds, or, or not even that long, maybe three or four rounds, and then it just falls into its groove with one guy just being the better boxer. But the thing is, though, I never really pushing it. But the thing goes, but then Stevenson has n hasn't had any scrap that I would call scrappy. That's the problem. That's the only thing. Scrappy, because I feel like Colbert is gonna make it that way. But it's like Stevenson to end up taming him a little. And I could definitely see that too. You no, know, but uh, but I mean, I think Colbert. I think Colbert too also has faster hands than Stevenson. I mean, it's also and it's also a familiarity thing because Colbert and Stevenson are very familiar with each other because they've sparred together many times. And they and they don't like each other, which is yeah. <laughs> so it's like it'll be it'll be nippy, but then it's like somebody's gonna turn into the like fuck all this. I'm gonna just try to win this shit, and I don't care about looking good. And I feel like that's gonna be Stevenson, and he's gonna use his footwork, and Colbert is gonna end up trying to chase him, and not really be able to cut off the ring and, and, and get to him like that. I, I mean, I think I think he'll, I think he'll pull, I think he pull away just because I think Stevenson ultimately is the more talented, skilled fighter. But I think Colbert's yeah, familiar with it too, of course. Familiar, but Colbert's familiarity with Shakur and how he operates is going to make it tough because I know all your moves, I know what you like to do, and I'm going to fucking take that away from you. Um, do it like we're in sparring. Yeah, Stevenson then got some new moves by now. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think the firmware is the same, man. Well, let's put it this way. I mean, right now, at least both of them at least show me. So, it's, it's, uh, Shakur finally showed that he can put together a complete performance against Heron, and Colbert showed me that he can really, if he, 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 that, he that he really does have good offense when he when he knocked out that 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 Dominican cat. You know that he can oh, really let plus. Let plus, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, okay. LB. Let me ask you this. A new segment. Let me ask. Have, you this. Have we have we really seen Shakur in a real true give and take fight? Cause that's Shakur because Colbert will give it to him just as much as Shakur will give it to him. So can Shakur take it? It's different when you're in a give and take fight with a guy that's I think like because he, yeah, he, he's the bigger guy, I just I, I don't think Shakur I think he I don't think he has a chin like that. I think he's physically strong, but you know how you got some guys who are physically strong, but if you whack them a good shot, it's like you could really buzz them hard. Yeah. yeah. Like you yeah. might see like kind of like an Anthony Joshua in a way. Yeah. But I, mean, I want to say Joshua doesn't have a chin. No, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying he doesn't have a chin, but I mean durability is something that I want to I want to see. I want to see how durable you are. Because when you consistently able to really get him with a good shot like that, exactly, or even win rounds like, or even make rounds close like, <laughs> you're gonna have to have good footwork and good hand speed. Just good, you just have to be a good fucking fighter. Yeah, and, and that's why I just I, I just hope they can actually. I, I mean, if Colbert actually becomes the legit 130 champion and beats Gutierrez. And Shakur is still still hanging around 130. I definitely would want to see that fight. Like they, I hope hopefully they do try to do everything in the power to actually make that fight. Man, so I doubt that that'll happen gotcha. anytime. I doubt that'll happen to anytime soon. Shakur can't even get Valdez, which is bullshit. Let me let me ask you this, Pat. Okay, I'm the, I'm the boxing genie for 2012. 2022. I'm present to you two fights. Either one will definitely happen. 
but you can only pick one and the one that doesn't happen never happens Colbert Stevenson Andre Jamal Charlo Jeez <laughs> and, Andre Charlo yeah. Give me that That's the one you that's the one you pick King P Yes that's that's what I'm picking Andre needs that. Like he's at a point where he yeah, needs one sixty needs that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm Shakur, yeah, has, Shakur, he, like yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't like them to never fight, but Shakur has other options, and we know that he's gonna get these fights eventually. But Andre's kind of running out of time. He needs a big fight. Yeah, because because the thing is, you're getting. One fight would be one of the biggest fights in that division. It literally could be a fight of the year type fight. Mm-hmm. Compared to one fight that it'll be a very good fight. But if you play around, you could get better fights from those two. Right, and there you it, go. It, there you go. It, yeah, and I'm liable, and I definitely agree with you on that one because it's like straight of Oscar Valdez, Chris Colbert fight would be off the chain. Because yeah, like, you know what? If if I'll tell you what, in a couple of years, you're looking at wait, you're looking at like you could looking at a uh, Shakur Stevenson versus a Keyshawn Davis fight. That's a real big fight if if Keyshawn is who we think he is and stays at. I mean, Keyshawn Davis fights at 135. I mean, Shakur's but Shakur's gonna be at 135. Yeah, yeah. See, Shakur's big. He's gonna fill out. Yeah, Shakur's Shakur, Shakur will probably act quite. I mean, well, he, he might get he might get up to like 140 or something like that. He's a you know I can see him you know getting to that to that weight class. But yeah, you know, yeah, like you know 130, 135. 135 is gonna have players for years to come. Yeah, it's definitely, I don't think Shakur might go to 135 and be good by 135. Because like, it don't look like he's muscular at 130 right now like that. No, I mean, I mean he's, he's just like he's cut up, like, and and it shouldn't be a thing where he bulks up too much, but it shouldn't be something where he eats up there too. Right. Yeah, and you see yeah. how Jojo Diaz? I think one thirty-five is good for him, but it always looked like he was gonna move up from one twenty-six and all that shit anyway. Yeah, because he was having trouble making the weight, and he was. You know, and this is body frame, like, yeah. and some niggas they move up so late, it's like the move up don't even really help them, so they gotta move up again anyway. Right. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah we. Were-